Before we look at how to configure the model tree, let's talk about why you would want to configure it. Here I have an assembly open in Creo Parametric and I'm using the default settings for the model tree. And so I can see the components in the assembly, but I can't see their features. Also, some of the parts have their part number, but I can't tell what they are. Furthermore, if I take a component and suppress it, a bunch of components go away from the graphics area and from the model tree, and I have no idea that they've been suppressed. Configuring the model tree is a three-step process. Step number one, we're going to get the model tree to look the way that we want it to. To do that, I'll start off by going to the settings icon and choosing tree filters. And I like to display features. The placement folder will show me the constraints for the different components in the assembly. Annotations will show me any 3D annotations. Suppressed objects. And I also will just check everything else in here. And in addition to the checkboxes on the left-hand side, there are tabs for the various different modes in Creo Parametric, but most of these are already checked, and maybe you want to uncheck some of the options if they are cluttering up your screen. So for example, some people don't like to see sketches in the model tree once they've been used by some kind of feature like an extrude or a revolve. When you're happy with the tree filters, you'll click OK. And now you can see that my model tree has expanded. I can see some other components that were suppressed. I can see my default datums. And in the if I expand my components, I'll see a placement folder and within individual parts, the features in those parts. In addition to configuring the filters, we can also configure what columns are displayed. And so from the drop down list over here, if I change to model params, unfortunately I have to type in PTC underscore common um, underscore name and add it to the list of displayed columns. And we can crank up the number of characters of the width of the column. And you could add other columns in here. So for example, you could go to mass properties parameters and you could show pro MP mass if you wanted to see the weights of the different components. I'm happy with this, so I'll go and click OK. And my additional column is added. Now I can see the common names of some of the components, especially some of the ones that were displayed using an alphanumeric code as opposed to words. So again, the first step is you are going to set up the model tree the way that you want it to appear. The second step is that you are going to save your settings file. And I would recommend that you save it in a place that you remember. So for example, all my configurations are in C Creo. And by default, it's going to be saved under the name tree.cfg. And there's no reason to change that. Now I'll click Save. And the third step of configuring the model tree is that we're going to set a configuration option to point to that file. So I'll click File, Options, then go to Configuration Editor. I'll click the Add button. And the option that we want to add is called MDL underscore tree underscore CFG underscore file. But because of the type of head functionality, you only have to type a couple of characters and it's recognized. Now I will browse to the file and select it and click OK. Let's export our configuration file to the folder where it's going to be read in upon launching of Creo Parametric and click OK. Next time I restart Creo Parametric, it'll read in that tree.cfg file and my model tree will be configured the way that I want it to appear. Thank you very much.